Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a closer look at the Battle of Florum, which I bet you don't remember that well. Yes, this is the one with Hondo and all of his Twi'leks, and the younglings that Ahsoka takes to Ilum to get their very first lightsabers against General Grievous, who actually just got finished one-shotting Kenobi's capital ship, which is insane. And this is the battle that takes place right after that, and I thought it was pretty crazy, so let's go ahead and take another look at it. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. We're gonna be taking a look at Star Wars battles in slow motion to see if we can find all the cool little details that someone took the time to animate and put in these episodes. If you have any ideas for battles that we haven't looked at yet, feel free to put them in the comments. Now, just catching everyone up to speed, at this point, Ahsoka's taken the younglings to Ilum, Hondo attacked them, tried to board their ship and steal their lightsaber crystals to sell on the black market. They ended up escaping, but Hondo kidnapped Ahsoka and they called for help, Obi-Wan showed up and Grievous was like, uh-uh, boom. That was the last video. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch that and then come back to this, but the younglings decide to rescue Ahsoka themselves, and that's where we are at now. They pose as these little acrobatic entertainers to join the traveling circus on the way to Hondo's camp, and it just gets crazier from there. Let the show begin! This is so cool. I forgot that they have a Norglatch in this circus. I mean, it's pretty crazy that these kids just join the circus, kind of take it over, and then completely burn any bridges this guy had with Hondo. And I don't know if you remember, but Hondo tells this guy he actually killed his last performers because he didn't like them. I would hate to be forced to cut off their heads like I did your last time. You remember those guys. And the kids just made this guy's life so much worse. But the Narglatch is so cool. I wonder how they got it. These are the creatures they ride on Ordo Plutonia, I think, in the snow episodes. And they are beasts in that episode. It's crazy that this guy was able to tame it. Hondo is such a cool character. They really struck gold with him. I'm glad for this show they let the pirates be pirates. They're bad guys. They get drunk all the time. They didn't like kidsify it and make it like super family friendly. They're just actual pirates. Is that a Gamorrean guard clown? Is he with the circus? That's crazy. I didn't even see him. <sighs> that was a good act. Oh. It says fleet and Jedi kids. <laughs> what? The children are Jedi. I love that he's just drunk all the time. Did that pirate have a prosthetic arm? Yeah, from the elbow down. That's really cool. <laughs> I wonder which Jedi got the pirate. Someone just got their first kill unless that was Ahsoka. Get us out of here. Can you imagine if like a 12 year old just hopped in a random car and started it up and drove away? I feel like it's pretty impressive that these little younglings know how to just start up a speeder and go for it. <laughs> are all the pirates drunk or are they just bad at driving? How do you feel better now? Yeah, I'm glad she feels good now because Hondo was gonna sell her into the bad freaky trade. Like that's crazy. He was like, oh, you're a female. They will pay even more, yes? I'm curious who he was gonna sell her to. The Zygerians? They would definitely take her. I mean, they kind of already did in another arc. Or maybe the Huts? I mean, Jabba would love another, you know, person like that next to him, I'm sure. I don't know. I think he was looking for a higher bonus because she was a female. That's wild though. It's a kid's show. Yeah, the pirates literally just come out of nowhere the next episode. I guess they just catch up with them eventually because they're on swoop bikes and those are faster. These pirates have way better aim than stormtroopers. Come in, please. Kenobi, uh, maybe the pirates are jamming the signal. Oh my gosh, I forgot. Who is this? Greg Sipes? Yeah, plays Beast Boy. I love that they had him play a little, you know, mini Kit Fisto Nautilin. It looks and sounds so perfect. I love this. This is crazy that they do this. It would have been cool if the pirates tried to board their ship. Jeez, I mean, it's a good thing Ahsoka popped up. She blocked it at the last second. I was kind of going for the little Padawan, Zat. I was going for his head. Jump down now! Jeez, that is crazy. Did you see it do a barrel roll? 
I did not realize that. Not only did we almost lose R2, but this huge starship hits this little tiny speeder with Ahsoka and the younglings on it. I mean, it absolutely destroys it. Like it pushes it to the side and it catches in the ground right here. And then it just tumbles. Like it does a full 360, like right here, this is the bottom of the speeder. They're upside down and thrown out of it. But then when you cut to the next scene, it's like the softest landing ever. And they're still upright. I think this means that they never flipped. Yeah, see, cause R2's on top. And as soon as it hits, R2 goes flying out and does a face plant. Look at this. I mean, a little bit janky physics, but they were on the outside of it. Something else fell out of it too. I mean, I can't see anyone else. I mean, I guess they could be inside of it. I didn't think about that, but it doesn't look like they got inside. Ahsoka's on the top and then one, two, three, four, five kids. Yeah, this is the last we see of it. All the kids are on the hole. Let's just zoom in and see if we can see what happens. I guess Ahsoka's right here. Okay, looks like she turns off her lightsabers, but that's it. You can't see them on the outside, so maybe they went inside. I mean, that kind of looks like R2, that little motion blur of him. Oh, that other person getting thrown off. This is Ahsoka. Look at this. She comes from underneath. R2 gets like dropped out weird. Let's see where the kids are. Yeah, I don't see the kids either. I want to assume that they're inside of it. I mean, everyone's sitting outside of it here. <laughs> what is this kid doing? He's trying so hard. The Wookiee's trying to eat it. Poor Gunji. Droids? This is crazy. They just pull up and immediately start murdering the pirates. Look at this. They're deploying their forces and the staff trooper has already fired before he even finished exiting the ship. Well, I was like, did he just delete whatever was on top? Look at this, the stab shoots the first guy in the chest and he falls backwards and when it rears up, it shoots it in the neck. Sad. Oof, goodness. That guy got hit hard too. How is Grievous even here? Okay, so the biggest thing that was confusing in the last video where it's this episode, but earlier, or I guess the episode before it, when Obi-Wan agrees to come rescue the younglings, Grievous drops out of hyperspace immediately, right on top of Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan is not at Florum yet. So Grievous is coming to Hondo because Dooku basically is taking over Florum and taking control of Hondo's stuff. Because last time Hondo had Dooku, he was trying to sell him on the black market as well. So he sends Grievous to come take over Hondo's camp and basically all of Florum. But I have no idea how he found Kenobi. He dropped out of hyperspace, had this entire battle, and then destroyed his capital ship and left Kenobi in escape pods. I get that it was for the plot, but still, that's a little high on the convenience, don't you think? And now all of a sudden, here he is again. We're all in trouble! Oh my goodness. Look at this blast go right through him. Wait, does it graze him or does it go out in the back? I think it grazes his front. Yeah, I think it just grazes him. Oh, wait, wait, he gets shot in the middle. Look at the little hole. Maybe it's just the angle he was standing sideways. It's confusing me. That's still pretty brutal. Jeez, immediately three people killed. Right in the chest too. Commando droids don't mess around. General Grievous, I presume? Whoa, so this is Hondo and Grievous' first time meeting? And this is season five too. Hondo Onaka, as I recall the last time we met face to face, I was your prisoner. Uh, yeah, see, Dooku wants to get back at him for capturing him and trying to sell him, so he's gonna take all of Hondo's stuff and melt down his entire arsenal. Everything you own is now property of the Separatist Alliance. Now you go too far. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Such a cool character. I would watch a show, Clone Wars style, if it was just the adventures of Hondo's pirates and him going around the galaxy for two, three seasons, just causing absolute chaos being a pirate. I think that would be so entertaining. This isn't good. Those scrapping droids are looting the place. I wonder if there's an ulterior motive for scrapping all the pirate stuff. I wonder if it literally was to get back at Hondo and take away what he prized the most. Or I wonder if they were going to melt everything down and turn it into more battle droids or something. I don't think they're running short on asteroids above Geonosis, you know? Also, I mean, it could be anything, but this almost looks like a clone chest plate. I wonder if there's some backstory hidden or something somewhere because that is pretty interesting. I don't know why, but every time R2 interacts with the B1 battle droids, it's always such a little wholesome interaction. I love Sedan. I like the Citadel where he had his own battle droids that he commanded. That was pretty funny. Sorry, Commander. Just wanted to fool them. 
I love that in this episode, they start off with Hondo trying to like take the kids lightsabers and then kidnaps Ahsoka and then almost sells her on the black market and then switches around to the kids and Ahsoka coming back to free Hondo and then fight together against Grievous and Battle Droids. It's crazy. Well then, show me. Show me your swords, tiny Jedi. Show me your swords, tiny Jedi. It has the same vibe of, I don't know if you guys watch Bob's Burgers, but when the landlord fish odor comes in, he calls the children little burger children or tiny belchers. He has a lot of funny, cute little mini nicknames for them. This was the same vibe. Hello, belcher child. Show Hondo you are ready to fight. Whoa, did you see this? This is really interesting. Look at the width of the lightsabers. They're both the same. And then look at these. Like, look how much more thin Gunji's lightsaber is than the little Rodians. Like, it almost looks like a perspective thing as you get farther away from camera. The lightsabers are a little thicker, but theirs is the same thickness as hers. Look how thin Gunji's is. He's a Wookiee. If anything, I would expect him to have the thicker lightsaber blade. That's so interesting. I mean, that's definitely like an artistic choice because he has the special wooden handle that's, you know, looking beautiful and everything, but I wonder why his blade is more thin. It's not finished. I never finished it. Finish it now. This is worth the price of a ship to see the construction of a Jedi lightsaber. This is priceless. I love that Hondo acknowledges how rare it is, but to see a youngling assemble their first lightsaber or just any lightsaber with the force and that he values it so much he's willing to accept that as his token for helping them and showing him his ships. I thought that was really cool. Not only is he a pirate and a collector of things, but he's also a collector of experiences and he wants to see something as rare as that with his eyes for himself. I also think it's borderline wholesome that he's encouraging the youngling to overcome her struggle and build her lightsaber. It's kind of sweet. I'm not saying he's a good father figure, but... Well, cut me down, little Jedi. <laughs> cut me down, little Jedi. I love that. It's so funny. So why the big show? You didn't really have a choice. You know we have to work together. Ahsoka called him out on it. He, she was like, why did you do that? You didn't have to, but you were nice. And his response is that he doesn't like taking children into battle. Like he's not fond of the idea of putting children in harm's way, which is even a little more wholesome. But then Ahsoka reminds him that he did attack them in the first place and he goes back to being a pirate. Jeez, they wasted no time scrapping all of Pondo's stuff. They're just burning it to burn it. What should I? The little ones, half the size of normal Jedi. They're freeing the prisoners and my knees. My knees. <laughs> Did he scream after his head was cut off? And they're just toying with him. Like the guy that just cut his knees off, just somersaulted away. And another youngling came in and cut his head off. And he definitely yelled after his head was cut off. This is giving Bad Batch the way they're just charging the battle droids and they're actually doing pretty well too. I think it's because they have plot armor now that they're working with the good guys. They have more odds in their favor, which is pretty funny. Oh, look at that. Cool. This pirate runs up to this battle droid, shoots him in the head, and then Sparta kicks him right in the chest. Immediately shoots his friend in the hip too. This is pretty interesting. His buddy, the larger one, shot this battle droid behind him, shoots him in the hips, right? And instead of falling down, he just dies like this. Like on Phantom Menace, when they shut down the droids and they just power down, he's kind of stuck like this, standing up until he gets shot again. Look at that. Do you see that trigger finger? Okay, so this guy shoots him in the hip, right? And then he shoots him one, two, three more times and immediately starts the trigger finger reflex. He's got two shots already. I mean, he goes to strangle him. He's already shot him four times. He has at least six extra shots go off after he's been killed. And if he's not dead, I mean, it's wild that he took that much gunfire and is still alive. That droid just won't die. I don't know why. Did he just deflect blaster fire? No way, he's using it like a lightsaber. That is crazy. Just for a casual to be blocking blaster fire? Not only did he block it, but he directed it back at the guy that fired it and killed the battle droid. Look at this, slices this one in half too. That's crazy. Who would have thought? I feel like that's not easy to redirect blaster fire back to the source with a sword. 
It's pretty cool to see him go up against the B1s with just a sword though. And the fact that he's cutting clean through the metal is wild. Look at this, stabs him right in the chest and just electrocutes him to death. That is so cool. I love that it becomes a regular thing that the kids are just at knee height. So when they chop up battle droids, they hit them right at the knees and it drops them down to their height. Now they're the same height as them. Does she jump off of him? Look at this nice little stab through the chest. That is really cool. I know they're trained and they're Jedi, but I would be a little too nervous to do a somersault with a lightsaber. Like not only is there a higher chance of me cutting my own limbs off because I'm rolling on the ground with a laser sword, but also, I mean, what if you accidentally hit a friend in combat? Like that's pretty close. Cool little tag team. Look at that kick, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Literally just running over the B1s. Wow, Grievous is a little brave. I'm surprised Grievous didn't just jump on right there. Whoa, do you see that? While the pirates did survive longer than they would have if they weren't with the good guys, this guy still gets hit and it absolutely ejects him off his swoop bike. I mean, look how high he goes. Oh, Whoa, that is so cool. Look at this. It looks like the Twilight, but at this point in time, I'm pretty sure the Twilight already went down on Mandalore when Obi-Wan and Satine were flying it, that whole thing. And I kind of thought it was unique, like a one of a kind, but I guess this is another version of that ship. It's probably the only ever one we've ever seen. It's also a pretty neat landmark to tell where the secret base is. I mean, makes it a little easier for other people to find, I'm sure, but that is so cool. <laughs> Also, I feel like Grievous has no sympathy that these are little tiny Jedi, little children. Uh, he's just like, cool, easier lightsabers for me to get. My collection's gonna grow plus five. See, look how thin Gunji's blade is. That is so interesting. We have to shake Grievous off. That's aggressive. <laughs> Jeez, R2 almost kills everyone. Huang told him to shake him off and instead he flips the whole thing. I mean, I guess they can do a barrel roll, but I mean, last time they were on the ground. I don't know how they didn't fall off the top of this. In the shot before, they are still standing on it. They get tossed around so much. That's a hard hit for a little kid to take. That is such a creepy shot to see coming at you. Yeah, okay. It's nice in theory, but those kids have no shot taking down Grievous. Also, Gunji's lightsaber looks closer to normal size here. It varies by shot a little bit. It is pretty funny that sometimes, even though he has all four arms and blades out, it only seems like he engages with two blades. You would think even with the dual wielding Jedi, four is still going to overwhelm them eventually if they get caught up in it, but he just doesn't use them sometimes. It's almost like he can only use two at a time. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Grievous could easily make that jump, right? Ahsoka obviously had to force jump. He's literally a cyborg. He's half machine and he's strong too. I feel like he could make that jump. Worst case, he deploys his little grappling hook from season three and all the other times he's used it, latches onto the ship and jumps right on board. Then what are you gonna do, Ahsoka? He lets you get away. This is so cool. Just opening fire with the Slave 1 on Grievous point blank. Gotta hit him eventually. I thought he tripped or got hit, but it doesn't seem like he did. Because one blast hits here, and then this one that's underneath his foot hits right there, I think. So it's almost like he just jumps and falls forward, like he just trips on his own. Maybe he just got scared. Yeah, everything goes around him. Nothing hits him. That's crazy. He like cuddled up in the fetal position. That's wild. <laughs> Really cool to see the Slave 1 in a Republic hangar. What is that, an ATRT in the back? Funny, he's got a little B1 battle droid chew toy. They should make those, people would buy them. If you have a dog, would you get this as a chew toy? I feel like people would buy this, that's a great idea. I like this here, a little bit of respect slash encouragement. He's not all bad. Welcome home young Jedi.
pretty crazy. This was super unique, random, rare episode team up. The pirates and younglings against Grievous. Really cool. Let me know if you guys enjoyed it. Send it to your Star Wars friends and tell me in the comments what battles you want to look at next. Thanks for watching and until next time, the force will be with you always.